here it is, guys. This is everything broken down. Um, our beautiful new black tranny case. Looking good. Courtesy of Michael. Just a rattle can job that and looks I can't professional. Pick this, up, but this is our awesome crimson oil pan too. It's gonna look real, real nice in that old rust bucket Z that we got. Um, so basically, we just have everything laid out the way we broke it down, like a big old puzzle. We're going through replacing everything down to all the seals, or replacing bushings, or replacing everything. So all the gaskets, all the seals, everything. It's going to be a brand new tranny, except for the case. So let's get started. Let's it's get going to be going. a pretty slow, boring video, so we'll just kind of catch you up after every little bit. Along here, we already got the first clutch pack in and retained. First planetary sets going in now. Our sprag. I got the valve body put together, ready to go. I got the pump ready to go. Matt's just giving everything a wipe down and we're gonna keep on rocking and rolling. We did it. You got the training done. After much trials and tribulations. Yeah, it went pretty good. We did have to use a saw. Good. We did have to use a saw. And a press, that was not planned. With some hand, True. we had to make some tools. Had to take a couple things back apart. You know, just yeah, I had to just move backwards stuff. a little yeah, bit. Just, just the usual. Stuff, yeah. But there she is. She's ready to go. All it needs is that PTC converter sitting in front of it. We mostly retain the quality of the paint job on it, but it still looks pretty slick. And this, with a little bit of luck, is the last time we'll be opening this tranny before we're running sixes. Oh, it's running sixes. I mean, it's got to run it's a running six. It's running sixes as it is. It's got to run a six like that. And you know what? If it gets us through the whole season without breakdown, that would be amazing. Huge bonus. Not expected, but that would be great. Yeah. All right, that's all for tonight. So I just bought the auto injection tester and cleaner. I got this off eBay for like less than, for around 300 bucks. Um, it's like 100 to 200 bucks to get a set of injectors clean. So I'm like, you know what? This is something we're gonna be wanting to do routinely. And it's probably something I could utilize at work too. So I uh, decided to go ahead and just buy this instead. So I'm giving it a test run. I've already experimented with the other four injectors for the Z and they're about as clean as any injector on earth. I just was messing with it. So this time I'm for the remaining two injectors, I wanna get like before and after reading. So I'm gonna be measuring the amount of um, the volume that it will displace through the injectors before and then after I do an ultrasonic cleaning, uh, forward and backward flushing and, uh, and retest them and see if it improves a whole lot. High speed spray value test, which is number 10. And it's basically just gonna pulse the injectors fast for 10 seconds, and we're gonna measure the volume that we get. All right, so before cleaning, we're at about 40 milliliters and 39 milliliters. Let's see how much we can improve that. So we got the ultrasonic cleaning going now. This takes about 10 minutes. And for it, you just set the injectors down into some cleaner. Now I'm using uh, just some Lucas injector cleaner. And you can hear it's just kind of vibrating around while it cycles the injectors over and over again. It does that for 10 minutes. And so once that's done, then we'll do a reverse flow on them. And then we'll do go back and do our forward flowing again to see if we made any improvements. All right, so now that the uh, ultrasonic cleaning is over, we're going to reverse flush these puppies. So I got them in there upside down. We're going to set this thing to 11. 11 is reverse flushing. And we'll see if it leaks. See, it just opens and closes. This one's staying on, looks like. Hmm, let me try a different connector. Hmm. I don't think this one's energizing or something going on with that injector. Huh, it's barely trickling anything out either something going on with this injector because even with this one disconnected you can see the you can kind of hear the, in, the injector click slightly and it's like stuck open and it's not really sealing either now it's worth noting that these things aren't meant to flow that direction but 
all the other five injectors have not had this trouble. They've all acted pretty normal. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip them around now that they've been sufficiently flushed backwards. And we're gonna see how it behaves in the normal direction of flow. But there is definitely something suspect about that injector. So it seems to be acting normally now. I just kind of ran some cycles through it. And it's the one on the left side here. They seem to be matching in performance pretty well. Um, I wanna also go ahead and do a leak test. So all this does is just put them under pressure. We'll shut the return valve and it's gonna get to about 50 PSI. And we're just looking for any drips. General rule of thumb is a drop per minute is allowable. Anything greater than one drop per minute at 50 PSI is excessive. And uh, I've yet to see one drip at all. So it's the whole test is one minute. So it already you can tell it's sealing up better than it was in the reverse flush test. But during this test, it just goes full open for a second and then full shut for a second. And so you can see it's very uniform on both sides now. During the reverse flush test, you saw that this side wasn't really opening fully, but it also wasn't really closing fully. It was really acting like it was stuck or something was stuck in it. But it does seem to be behaving now. We were at pretty much dead nuts even, 91 milliliter, mil, milliliters on from both injectors. So I'm going to go ahead and um, run a, another reverse flush on them. All right, so now I got them set to reverse flush again. Let's see if we get different results this time. I'm not just staying stuck on. That's interesting. And if I switch these connectors, then what happens? Same. What the hell? Alright, so this connector is definitely misbehaving on the reverse flush, but it seems to be totally normal in normal direction of flushing. Not sure if that's a problem or not. Drop in the comments if you know it's a problem. Otherwise, I'm gonna send it because we're getting the same flow readings out of all six injectors and they've all been thoroughly cleaned. Um, and other than the reverse flush on this one injector, hasn't been anything funny happened. So let me know if that's gonna be a problem. Maybe I'll just buy another injector to replace it just in case. I don't know. I just reversed the polarities on this connector and it seems to be working fine. It seems to have a, it seems to discriminate against one polarity and not the other, which is kind of unusual for a solenoid. Usually they're pretty, you know, reverse polarity friendly. You know, they, they work in a pretty simple manner. But in this case, this injector needs the correct polarity, evidently. Let's see if I stop this, and I'm gonna take this one and flip it the same way. And I'll bet you it acts the exact same way. See, that one doesn't care. This one cares, this one doesn't care. I don't think it's gonna be a problem. We're gonna send it. All right, so this is the same test I did on them initially before I started for these two. And you know, remember, I think it was like 40 and 39 milliliters. Let's see what we got now. This only goes for 10 seconds. And it appears to be pretty much the same exact results. 39 milliliters on both sides. So what we can conclude with that is that the injectors were pretty damn clean in the beginning. And I kind of figured they would be. It's only been one season. The car's pretty much been track driven only and it's been on E85. So E85 has a lot of cleaning properties that keep things nice and clean, but it also can cause deterioration of hoses and fuel cells and stuff like that. So it's definitely a good practice to do anyway. And now that I got this thing, I'm probably gonna do it all the freaking time. I thought about pulling the injectors out of the vet too and go ahead and cleaning them too. Might as well, but. Anyway, I got this thing to clean injectors now, and honestly, it's a lot of fun. So that's all I got done this week. Um, this winter's kind of a slow time. You know, we're really just planning and making improvements to the car little by little, so the content's going to be kind of drab. Um, I'll probably be sharing a little bit more technical inf information and a little bit more um, of the step for, step for step and the thought process of everything that we're doing to prepare for the 2020 season. If you if you want to make a suggestion or, or have any comments to leave, just uh, drop them in the comments. You know, I'm happy to get some feedback. But uh, thanks for watching. Appreciate the support. We're up to 200 subscribers now, which doesn't sound like shit. You know, it sounds like a pretty small accomplishment. 
but that's 200 people who cared enough about our crappy old Z to hit the subscribe button, and I think that's pretty cool. And we don't get anything out of sharing these videos, you know, we don't have nearly enough following to, to monetize or anything like that. I just do it for fun. We enjoy working on the car, and I enjoy just editing the video and just sharing the whole experience. To me, it's a lot of fun. I uh, appreciate all the support from you guys, and uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.